they were down to their very last supplies, almost out of food. They had to take thatch from the roofs of the houses to feed the horses. Um, and they were down to the last two barrels or so of gunpowder. So they, they were very close, I guess, to having to, to give up in time. Wow. The Royalists did break through these barricades, so they got through most of the town. They burnt a lot of the houses. And the commander sent this final challenge or summons to Blake saying, surrender now and I'll spare your lives. But if you don't surrender, you'll all be massacred. Wow. I'm headed to Taunton Castle to find out more about Thomas Trowbridge's experience during the siege of Taunton. Historian Bernard Cap is here to fill me in on all the action. How are you? Hi, Cindy. Very good to meet you. Yesterday, I found out that Thomas Trowbridge was a captain in the English Civil War. So I, I guess I'm curious, I, how does a siege work? Set the stage for me a little bit, what okay. was happening in Taunton at, in 1641 or 42. So when Blake uh, came in and got Trowbridge and these others involved, that the first task was to dig trenches, put up barricades, all sorts of things. So that the, the castle was the, the ultimate stronghold and defense bastion. Bernard tells me that in October of 1644, Taunton was the only parliamentarian holdout in Somerset County, so it was targeted by King Charles. His royalist forces surrounded the town and left the citizens with no access to help or supplies. What's even more extraordinary to me was Thomas's role in the siege. As captain, he was responsible for protecting the people of Taunton during the brutal attack that lasted seven months. To begin with, the, the garrison only had supplies of food or uh, ammunition, gunpowder and so on, for three months. So there's a real stress there. How are they going to last out? Yeah. In, in the last two or three months of the siege, it was tighter than ever before, which meant no food getting in. And there was desperate hunger. They were down to their very last supplies, almost out of food. They had to take thatch from the roofs of the houses to feed the horses. Um, and they were down to the last two barrels or so of gunpowder. So they, they were very close, I guess, to having to, to give up in time. Wow. The Royalists did break through these barricades, so they got through most of the town. They burnt a lot of the houses. And the commander sent this final challenge or summons to Blake saying, surrender now and I'll spare your lives. But if you don't surrender, you'll all be massacred. Wow. Cindy Crawford is at Taunton Castle in England, where in 1645, her ancestor, Thomas Trowbridge, was issued an ultimatum to surrender the castle or be killed by King Charles's army. The siege was maintained over quite a long period, and the town is literally desolate and destroyed and they're half starved. But they held out, and in the nick of time, the royalists have to withdraw to go and face Cromwell. So the siege is lifted and the garrison, the people, survive. They managed to hold on. Yeah. But a great cost to the community, correct? It, it's a huge cost, yes. And we have an account from the force coming into the town. This is an extract from it. On the 12th, Colonel Weldon entered the town, the inhabitants being joyed beyond expression. I bet they were yes. thrilled. <laughs> the country people, to the number of about a 1,000, came in from their hiding places in the woods and with broad eyes of wonder gazed upon the works which had defended the place and upon the soldiers who had defended the works, looking upon them as giants rather than men. So Thomas Trowbridge would have been considered a giant by the country people who came in because he was one of the soldiers yes, that yes. defended them. He's one of the leading giants. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To me, it seems like Taunton was a very decisive victory um, in the English Civil War. Well, Taunton was just one action, one siege. The, the war still goes on, there are big battles to be fought, but it's, Parliament is now on the upper hand. And a year later, in 1646, Parliament does finally come out on top. The war ends, the King has to surrender. What happens next? Trowbridge stays in Taunton. Something like two-thirds of the houses we've just seen had been destroyed by fire or battered, and they would have to face the prospect of starting life all over again. One of the things that really made me feel proud yesterday was that after the war, he petitioned the court on behalf of the soldiers who were injured under his service in the war to help them get pensions, to help yes. care for their family. Yeah, yeah. Clearly, he was an officer who cared about the men who'd been working with him, fighting for him. It just goes back to you, like, that is innate in all of us, that we, we, help, we want to help people. Great. Thank you nice. so much. It's been a pleasure. 
I think being here at Taunton Castle today helped me imagine what life was like for Thomas Trowbridge. Things were hot and heavy here. It was not easy, and that he would have been in the thick of it. Thomas had already left his homeland to escape the oppression of King Charles. But when he had the opportunity to fight for his beliefs, he took it. It's an honor to be descended from such a brave and committed man. I'm definitely interested in looking even further back into the Trowbridge family history, if that exists. I mean, we're already very far back, so I don't know if there's records beyond that, but that would be fascinating to me. It's incredible to follow my ancestry back to early 1600s England. But I want to see if I can go even further back, so I'm heading to London. I've been in London a lot over the last, I don't know, since I started modeling, but I've never really come and thought about my connection to England. It makes me more curious in a way, and looking at every building and every landmark and thinking, how am I connected to that? I'm meeting with genealogist Charles Mosley, who's been working on tracing my family beyond Thomas Trowbridge. What did you bring for me? What I'm excited to see. What's, what's in this scroll? Quite a bit. Uh, let's try rolling it back okay. and see where it takes us. But overall, over, shall we say, the next 10 generations, your ancestors are stepping up in the world, as you'll discover, by just tracing their steps. We have here Thomas Trowbridge, the mm -hmm. one that we've mentioned, son of John Trowbridge. But John Trowbridge marries a member of the Prowse family, the gentry, definite gentry status people, and one of them, William de Moon himself, the second, in the first half of the 12th century, is created Earl of Somerset. This is unbelievable. Charles has been able to trace my family tree back more than 12 centuries. It takes me from England to continental Europe, where I have distinguished ancestors that include counts, dukes, and even a king of Italy. Not bad for a girl from the Midwest. So from Thomas Trowbridge, 10 times great-grandfather, all the way up here to 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, and 39, 40. And then 40. we are getting back to something very august. <gasps> are you kidding me? 